Welcome back to the lead in politics. Here comes the sales pitch. But right now, the president is selling something that the majority of Americans don't want to buy. So how does he hawk military action in Syria when he himself says he'd prefer a diplomatic solution? Let's bring in our panel. Former National Security Spokesman for the Obama White House, Tommy Vitor, Washington Post columnist and former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, Michael Gerson, and CNN senior political, senior political analyst David Gergen. They gave, they gave you two seniors in the, in the <laughs> teleprompter there. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Tommy, the president's going to address uh, the, uh, the nation tonight at 9. What's he going to say? Because I, I feel like the, what he was going to say maybe two days ago is very different from what he might yeah. say tonight. Or two hours ago. I, I think you have to do a little backdrop of context about what's been happening. And then I think you have to make a moral case to the American people about why this is important to them. Um, I think he will obviously why have to address... Why strikes are important or why, why deal with Russia is important? Why chemical weapons in Syria, why little kids being gassed in their sleep with chemical weapons is important, why that endangers U.S. troops, uh, and why the credible threat of military force actually helps him reach a diplomatic solution to this problem. So, Michael, in the Washington Post, you wrote, quote, the Obama administration has generally waged a war of words and then used those words casually and clumsily. How can he make his words count tonight? Well, it's tough. First of all, they do have a, you know, a tremendous policy challenge, but for a speechwriter, it's a pretty exhilarating moment. I mean, you are now in your keyboard determining what do you say about the UN? What do you say about what you want Congress to do? It's a tough challenge here because you're not asking for action that's not going to happen, and you're not declaring victory because this is a very distant prospect to have inspections in the middle of a civil war. So it's a little more of a uh, status quo statement that you have to say, well, um, I'm committed to peace, but I have leverage here. I have to reestablish credibility here in a situation where you're negotiating from a position of weakness, where you were going to lose in the Congress, where you are internationally isolated. Um, and so he has to reestablish both his resolve here, uh, not be so ambiguous and conflicted in his message, um, and hold out the possibility that things can get better through negotiations at the same time. David, you've, you've uh, advised several White Houses. What would you tell President Obama tonight? I think this is an easy speech to write. It's a hard speech to sell. Because I, Tommy was right about framing as a moral choice. and He wants peace. He wants a peaceful resolution. He wants to get rid of chemical weapons. He's going to go to the UN first and try it. But if that doesn't work, he wants to reserve the option uh, to use force. I think that's pretty straightforward. But the American people you know, are hardened now against use of force. And their heads are spinning over the last 48 hours of the event. So we're all going to be looking, I think, tonight, as Michael says, for resolve, but also for clarity. What's he trying to do now? And how is he actually, is he, can he convince people he actually knows what he's doing, that they, have, that they have a firm grip on the will? I think that's been a real problem. He's got to avoid, I think, wrapping himself too much in the whole idea of peace, peace, peace. Pe oh, we all desire peace. We all want a peaceful resolution. But the quality of peace matters. I mean, they've been comparing uh, Assad to Hitler. The world well remembers when they cut a deal with, with Hitler back in the late sure. 1930s, and they called it peace in our time. And, and, Tommy, I mean, it's hard to dispute the notion that the messages have been somewhat mixed mm -hmm. um, and that the president does need to offer some clarity. If you look at the polling, uh, the American people believe that Assad gassed his own people. They still don't want to go to war. They still don't want military action. How do you convince them that they need, that that, that that is necessary, even though they're convinced of the basic case? They're yeah. still not voting to, con to do anything about it. I think this is where it gets challenging. I mean, you have to convince them that the Chemical Weapons Convention, that, that our nonproliferation regime uh, makes them more safe, makes our soldiers on the battlefield safer, uh, and is important for global security. And that's not easy to do. I think you need to make that moral case. But I also think you need to help them understand why, ironically, the threat of military force, a credible one, helps you get to a diplomatic outcome that doesn't involve force that, by the way, I mean, th this Russian play is, is difficult for a number of reasons. But if they do manage to secure the CW, that's actually a better outcome for the people of Syria because then that is no longer a tool for him to use. That would be wonderful if we could do that. We've been down this road before with Saddam Hussein. He agreed to let UN inspectors come in and look for weapons of mass destruction. And what happened? It took years. He obstructed, he lied, he threatened, and we didn't know after several years whether he'd gotten rid of all his chemical weapons. It, this is a really, really hard problem. We're not going to know in a week. 
whether this is a firm deal. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's, there's a hazard here in just emphasizing chemical weapons because we have big geostrategic interests in this region. You know, a rivalry with Iran. We've got uh, regional chaos spilling out over to neighbors. We have humanitarian nightmares that have nothing to do with chemical weapons. You can't accept the moral hazard to say, if you kill 1,400 people with, with chemical weapons, it's okay to use bombing of, uh, you know, Scud missiles on neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. he, so I think the president is going to have to broaden a little bit here and say, it's not just a chemical weapons treaty. We still have interests in this region that we have to affect. Um, I, that's a difficult challenge because the options are so poor. Um, and one of the things that, that Obama administration officials say, including the president, is one of the problems he's having making this case is that the nation is weary of involvement in the Middle East and Afghanistan. I think that's the case. I mean, as I said, he's entering this argument from a position of rhetorical weakness. It's just a fact. He lost the, the support of Congress in this process. He did not do well at the G20 in convincing other, other countries. Um, the American people are, are opposed. Um, so his main goal here is to try to explain why America needs the hard side of this debate in order for the soft side to succeed. Um, and that's going to be a difficult uh, challenge. You're exactly right. I mean, this is a remarkably different, difficult policy to talk about because the last person in the country that wants a war in Syria is Barack Obama. But he needs that, threat, that credible threat of force to get to a diplomatic outcome. You're absolutely right, though. I mean, there's a whole other dimension of humanitarian work that the United States is doing, will continue to do, that we also should keep emphasizing because there is a, a real cost. Yeah, he's... You know, he said today that he wants to put off the vote in the, in the, in the Congress until after he works through the diplomatic side. I think the hard thing today, today is tonight, is to move the needle of public opinion far enough that the Congress will actually give him that vote in a positive way a week, two weeks or three weeks down the road. It's, that's going to be hard to do, and I think we'll be judging the success. We'll all look at the polls in the next 48 hours and say, did he do it or not? And I think that's going to be the ultimate uh, question. To be continued, Michael Gerson, Tommy Vitor, David Gergen.